I've lost my motivation, I've lost my focus. I brought a specialty lens to help. 85 millimeter or 56 on APS-C forces you to concentrate on your subject, but you don't have to get too close. Street photographers think shooting from afar is cheating. So what about 250 millimeters? Over the past month, I've taken every shot at 85 or 250 on my Nikon ZF. These two focal lengths couldn't be more different, but both taught me the same lesson. I need to focus. I'm Jack and this is Bokeh Therapy. I'm only here because of the algorithm and waste too much time online. My solution? Street photography. Unpredictable, frustrating, yet so exhilarating that it strangely makes me more focused when I do get back to work. Now this felt like cheating. I assumed all fun comes at a cost until I read Cal Newport's Deep Work. Turns out complex creative tasks like street photography help us master deep focus. So six months ago, I took the challenge. Photo walks are now non-negotiable and had to become a sustainable habit alongside family and my day job. I used the deep work framework to come up with four rules of productivity photography and this morning I put them to the test. Thank you to TT Artisan for providing the lenses for this video. They did not sponsor the video nor did they have any input into its production. I have final edit. Everyone has their favorite photo walk locations and this is mine. It's right next to the riverfront. This location has great architecture, lots of interesting leading lines. But at the end of it is the famed Story Bridge. Never got a shot I've been happy with over the years. Today that's about to change. This new 250mm lens from TT Artisan is no cheat code. It has a fixed f5.6 aperture, a bit tricky and low light. There's no autofocus, it's manual focus only, but this does give it a few advantages. First, the look. Metal knurled edges around the big focus ring for a vintage vibe. There's no electronics, it's on an M42 screw mount, which means you can adapt it to any camera on the market. Its mirror reflex design uses reflections to project faraway objects back onto the sensor for much longer focal length in a smaller form factor. It's a 250 millimeter lens that only weighs 380 grams. Producing vintage inspired manual focus lenses is what TT Artisan is known for and it's a smart hyper focus strategy. But now they started releasing autofocus lenses having to deal with electronic contacts and AF algorithms across all the different manufacturers. This 56 millimeter f1.8 APS-C autofocusing lens gives an 85 millimeter field of view and is brand new to Nikon Z mount. Are there autofocus lenses a distraction or the main event. Rule one of productivity photography is to create a deep work only environment. Nothing distracts me from shooting more than the thought of thousands of unedited photos. I don't want to keep adding to that backlog. So I set up my office as the perfect editing bay. Color calibrated 4K monitor, mechanical keyboard, either shooting with Fuji JPEGs or using Lightroom presets for great color every time. But the part that keeps taking the longest is just picking the keepers. I shoot at different locations, random times during the day into the night and what I've learned is if there's no consistency coming in, there'll be no consistency coming out. I had to keep things simple, shooting in the same spots again and again. After all, this isn't travel photography, this is productivity photography. So my photo walks cover the same ground every single time. On the bus ride back to work, I would rate the shots in camera with a tap of the front button on the ZF. So I know the ones I like as soon as they're imported. My deep work only environment wasn't the home office after all, but instead, right here on the street. The reason I love this part of the photo walk is that there's old architecture and it all ends with an iconic shot of a bridge. Every city has a location like this where all the tourists and the casuals take a photo on their phones. Everyone here on their smartphones is getting just as good a photo of this bridge as me because I'm out of ideas. I needed new ideas to shake things up and that's the reason the 250 millimeter lens is interesting to me. It's a prime. No flexibility like a 70 to 100 zoom, but it's smaller retro design means I don't stick out in a crowd. Of course, there's no autofocus. On the Nikon ZF to enable IBIS for manual lenses, you have to add it to the non-CPU lens menu. 250 millimeters at f5.6 still has a very thin depth of field and its minimum focusing distance is two meters. It's pretty sharp up close, certainly sharper than vintage Minolta lenses that inspired them. At infinity, I still need to slow down and focus magnified to nail critical focus, but when you miss, you get this lenses headline feature. The thing you either love or hate the most about it. 
Rule two of productivity photography is to define your own metrics. One, did I feel energized or drained at the end? And two, did I try something new? Pushing my creative and cognitive boundaries is so important for mastering deep focus and I have to resist the temptation to replay the hits. It doesn't matter if I get zero keepers. I just need to be trying something new each time. I try to keep my photo walks short and to the point, under an hour to fit into a lunch break, otherwise it's diminishing returns. If I feel more drained than energized, coming back to the desk, it'll be nothing but distraction. Bokeh had better not be nervous or distracting, and the bokeh from this lens does stand out. F5.6 is actually quite fast as mirror reflex lenses go, so at 250 millimeters, you can get a lot of bokeh from the specular highlights as soon as you miss focus. It's not smooth spheres or soap bubbles, but instead donuts. Your mileage may vary, but I like it. There's very little chromatic aberration, just a hint of flare and direct sunlight, and as long as you don't go overboard, it can give your images a touch of nostalgia. But bokeh isn't the reason I kept coming back to this lens. It's actually to force me to focus on a bread and butter focal length I want to get better at. 250 millimeters is way tighter of a focal length than I'm used to. I usually shoot 85 as the longest and I have to think of an abstract composition and it's made harder by the fact that it's f5.6 but at 250 mil it is incredibly thin depth of field especially for a manual focused lens. I'm not really sure how this is going to go. Street photographers are divided about 85 millimeters. If you're used to shooting 35 or 50, the working distance for a subject to look the same size and frame is very different for 85. My reaction time wasn't quick enough shooting 85. It always looks a little too tight, like a studio portrait without context or emotion, and I needed to get better. TT Artisan's 56mm f1.8 converts to an 85 field of view, but I didn't realize it was an APS-C lens at first. I just thought it was a strong vignette that still covered 90% of the full frame imaging circle. If you wanted to crop about 10% in post, you can squeeze more megapixels out of it and get closer to a 65mm full frame field of view. I know the lens comes in X and E mount, but it's right at home on a Nikon. Brutalist all metal design looks very similar to Nikon's S primes. Even the font looks kind of the same. The square lens grip clicks on tightly and there's no wiggle on the lens mount. Why an APS-C 56 and not a full frame 85? A fast 50 already gives you plenty of bokeh even on APS-C and the lens can be smaller and lighter to cover the crop image circle. The ZF's 24 megapixel sensor crops to only about 10 megapixels in DX mode but I was curious how the latest Nikon processor would work with this third-party lens. Electronic contacts read a focal length so IBIS works fine by default and the autofocus is good. A step slower than Nikon's native glass in acquiring focus initially, but once 3D tracking kicks in, it's very sticky. Wide open, it's sharp. Not as sharp as my gold standard 50mm f1.8s, the best part is how well controlled the chromatic aberration is. Usually a telltale sign of a cheap optic, I shot everything wide open in broad daylight as a torture test but I can't see any fringing. Great performance for 160 bucks. There's very few compromises, it's firmware upgradable via rear lens cap USB-C port. Right now there's even 15% off the Z mount version, but as good as this lens is, it's not a creative crutch, I still needed to get better. Rule three of productivity photography is it stays in the calendar. You can't give yourself an out when it comes to deep focus. Count Newport recommends putting it in your calendar, blocking out the time so you and the people around you know this task is a priority. I played around with the scheduling and weekly photo walks is where I landed on the frequency. It's enough wiggle room to work around, enough time to finish the last edit, yet still fresh enough for you to remember the lessons learned from the last time out. The lesson I learned from 250 millimeters is how to shoot at 85. With 250, I had to pre-visualize the shot from so much further away than I'm used to, just to get a little more time to frame the subject before they disappear. Now when I switch to the 85, time slows down in the viewfinder. A relative eternity for me to get a good composition at the right working distance for more environmental context. This manual focus 250 is like the weighted turtle shell Goku and Krillin wore in Dragon Ball. It forced me to focus, to see the frame beyond the frame. Even when I took it off my camera, composing now felt lighter easier, more intuitive. But none of that matters if I don't make the time to get out and shoot in the first place. And the last rule of productivity photography is one goal only. 
chose 250 millimeter for a very specific photo of the bridge, but it turned out to be way more versatile for abstract compositions of different things and light and shadow than I thought. If you start every photo walk with just one goal in mind, it strangely takes the pressure off every other shot. Might as well try something new. None of these are the main event, and that's actually how I get into the flow. I got some shots of the bridge, maybe even the shot, but the shots around the bridge in some ways were more compelling. Photography is no longer just my hobby. It's my hack for productivity. And you really can't predict where art can take you. Even though I love street photography, I started to dabble in product photography. And I'll cover the interesting parallels between the two in the next video here when it's ready to go. I'm Jack, capturing peace in every moment.